Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Uh, welcome to another day in the stock markets here. It's uh, it's your Uncle Bruce on uh, Stock Markets with Bruce here on YouTube, where we talk about the stock markets in plain English. If you've never been here before, shame on you. Um, <laughs> Nice to have you here. We like to cover what's going on in the markets play, marketplace and try to explain it in a plain English kind of way. Try to keep out the gobbledygook and uh, kind of go from there. I'm wearing my green t-shirt today. I'm doing everything I can to move these markets for you. Uh, green t-shirt day means up day. And so far this morning, we do have an up uh, day. We seem to have the markets a little better off this morning. I'm happy to report. And hopefully this will continue. Um, we shall see the European markets went up overnight, shrugging off, apparently shrugging off the U.S. Uh, mixed markets uh, performance yesterday. And so, uh, well, let's just see if this uh, continues on. Uh, the Dow had a you know mixed day. It was down 400 something points at one point yesterday, 450 points. Then it came back to only be down 190 and then it lost 200 something by the time it was all said and done. Um, the, not even a percentage point. By the way, cheers to all of you from Uncle Bruce here in Creston, British Columbia. To, cheers to all of you around the world who are watching me today. I'm glad you're here with me from wherever you are. What's your opinion on long in the money calls on Google or Amazon in a year they can go up hundreds of share you can afford it that is well if you can yes uh, your your opinion on in the money calls on these yeah those are a fortune obviously because obviously these are trading at very high prices and so you can have to pay serious money to buy it but it's still cheaper to buy calls than the stock itself and so there's this, uh, you know, what do you do and how do you do it? How far out should you go? The further out you go, the more it will run you. Um, and I generally don't follow, I, I really do not follow the options markets for these stocks because of their very high price. I would far prefer that they were to announce a split. I can tell you, if these guys were to announce a 5 or a 10 for 1 stock split, I would be yelling at you guys to buy a call option on either one of these stocks or both of them, even if they're out of, the, out of the money six months out, because if they did a five for one split, you'd go from one contract to five contracts. If you had, uh, they did a 10 for one, so you'd have one now and you'd have, end up with 10 contracts. And I think that these shares could run up 50% in value just on the split excitement alone, which could make you a nice buck on your contracts. But there is no talk of this happening. There is no indication of any kind of split on these shares. They, 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 for years, investors have been wondering why they don't do it. They just haven't done it. I don't know if they ever will. Anyway, there you go. There you go. I've been watching for months. Um, uh, I got a burning question. When Hedgies short a company to bankruptcy, you've said they don't have to buy the stock back. How is that trade loop closed uh, to get their money? Well, they got their money. Uh, they sell the stock at, say, uh, 20 bucks a share, and they think the company's going to go to zero. Uh, they got the money for the 20 bucks a share in their account. They put 20 bucks of cash on the table to back up the 20 bucks that's there as additional margin. Stock goes to 10. The brokerage firm says you only need to have $10 worth of your money to hold this trade. Stock goes to eight. The brokerage firm says you only need to give us eight dollars of cash to hold your money. They can take now twelve dollars off the table of their money, and they can take twelve dollars of the gain uh, off the stock if they want, but they won't. They usually leave it just sitting there. Stock goes to a dollar. All right, it's down to a dollar. If they don't buy it back, they're up nineteen bucks on the short sale. They only have to put up a dollar of margin to carry the trade. So virtually all the money they put up to do the trade, they've taken off the table, and they got $19 of profit on this deal. If they don't buy it back and the stock gets suspended from trading and is now uh, no longer tradable, the shares eventually become defunct, and no one forces anyone to buy the stock back whatsoever. And the brokerage house basically says to the brokerage to the client, um, you, can, uh, you can take uh, $19.99 out of the account, leave us a penny for the, for the short position. And so in effect... They never have to buy the stock back. That's kind of what you're talking about here. It's theoretical. It, it happens very occasionally. It, it, it does happen from time to time, but it's occasional. 
Uh, most shorters, though, will buy this stuff back at a penny or two or three or four to close it out. They don't mind. They don't. I've made nineteen ninety five a share on a twenty dollar short sale. I'll buy these back for four cents with a penny in handling fees. No problem. Uh, there you go. All right. Okay. I'm thinking of rolling over my GameStop, a $250 a covered call for July 16. Uh, what strikes do you suggest for two to three weeks out? So if you're going to buy back your 250 GameStop, uh, what do you do? Well, if the shares bounce back, if you bought them back, good on you. Um, now watch the shares. If they bounce into this 190, 93 range, 195 range, you may want to write 240s for this Friday. Uh, you may want to write... Uh, 240s, uh, maybe write, rewrite 250s again um, for next week Friday. Uh, you know, maybe they, maybe you buy them back uh, here and, and sell them for seven, eight dollars higher, five, six dollars higher. I'm not sure. Keep an eye on that. Should I consider buying some short-term calls on SoFi that that expire in a week or two or a month since it's dipping, or should I just buy some more stocks? Well, it depends on the capital you have. Um, you know, if you're buying SoFi call contracts, let's say 1750s or, or something like that for a month or two, uh, you know, you're taking a chance that from here there's going to be a bounce back into the 2022 range, which is not a wild uh, gamble to make, uh, but you have to be cognizant of the fact that any price you pay for an option that has a very short time frame is money you're risking completely. Uh, it's cheap to get in, uh, but then again, you could still lose it all. On the other hand, if you're right, you're buying at 1708 right now in SoFi. You just buy the stock right now. This is a good guy, good buy. But if you can get 1750s that are uh, a month or two out at a cheap price, and the stock goes to 1850.19 between now and a month from now, a week from now, a day from now, an hour from now, you could do very well. How does earning potential for stock versus options compare? Say I buy 10 grand in stock and ditto in calls. The stocks go up 100% afterwards, which earn me the most? It depends on the contracts you're buying. Uh, and we'll be going into this in the class this Saturday. We are going to be talking about this exact topic on uh, buying and selling call and put contracts, how this works. We'll be covering this as well on Sunday when we talk about writing call options on how you can benefit from deterioration of contracts as people buy the wrong ones and that type of thing there are uh, there's two ways to play this game uh you either are you own them or you sell them uh, well there's three ways you don't do anything i guess um but uh, you can make a lot more money on call options if the stocks go up than on stocks themselves certainly here we go sofi 10 million available sofi shares to borrow at a one percent fee any idea what this means um, theoretically, uh, it means that there's stock available for borrowing, uh, but you know the, you don't want to sell low, you want to sell high. And as a shorter, uh, if you see a lot of stock available to short and the stock is moving up, it's telling me the shorters are, are not interested in shorting here. They're looking to acquire the stock to, to lock in gains. Because if you shorted it at 20, 21, and, and 19, and 18, you know, you, you, you're ahead. And this is why maybe at such a low rate and so many available, that's telling me that this stock is not going to be shorted anymore. It's now coming the other direction. And maybe that's what's going on. Uh, we'll see. Goodness, so far I hit 1680. What a sale. I will never understand some people if there was a 30 to 40% sale at their favorite stores, they'd run in and buy yet a sale on so far. M.E. Gores and people freak out. This is the market. This is the stock market. Uh, this is a different uh, a different game because you can't buy and sell a pair of socks from a store. You can only buy them on sale. You can't sell them back. With stock, you can sell it back. And there's the dilemma. You make money, you lose money, and now what do you do? What do you do? And um, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna wear the shares as clothing. You're gonna trade them, and that is what the human emotion is all about. Get ready, kids. This weekend, oh my God. It's happening. We will start our classes this Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern time for each class, Saturday and Sunday, live right here. And Bruce will be on the whiteboard just uh, going. This can be great.